All right, welcome back. Steve Forbes, Art Laffer, Peter Schiff, all about the Warren Buffett interview. Peter Schiff, I've never heard you say buy America for the long run, buy American stocks ever. I've never heard you <laughs> say it. I've never seen you write it. You always come on and tell us to sell the dollar and buy foreign stocks. You flip tonight. Listen, I happen to like the flip, but it doesn't matter what I like. Why did you do this? Well, you're talking about long term. I mean, you're talking about 10, 20, 30 years from now. That's correct. Look, the, the problem with Warren Buffett, I mean, if you go back... In 2004, Warren Buffett wrote an excellent article for Fortune magazine. In that article, he referred to America as being Squanderville, and he referred to himself as an economic doomsayer. And he actually predicted a major economic crisis for this country that was going to be brought about by excess borrowing and spending. And now that the crisis that he foresaw is actually upon us, Warren Buffett has had a change of heart. Now he wants Squanderville to squander even more money. He wants us to go deeper into debt. He wants us to issue more squanderbuck IOUs to our foreign creditors. Buffett? He's gone from an economic so truth-sayer you... to an economic cheerleader. Well, okay, but so why do you want to invest in America for the long run as Warren Buffett does? Look, for the long run, but he's talking economic policy right now. He, he is validating everything Barack Obama is doing. He's saying we need more stimulus, more bailouts. He's 100% wrong. What he's advocating is undermining the long run for our stocks. The only reason I'm bullish in the long run is because I think eventually we're going to repudiate all this nonsense and do the right thing. Ah, okay. But there's going to be a lot okay. of pain between right. now and then. Uh, Art Laffer, uh, you changed your whole position from the first segment after you heard Betsy Quick's report on Warren Buffett. You changed. <laughs> You want to buy stocks for the long run. I think that's an admirable uh, trade. I think it's great to have faith in our country. But why did you change from the first segment? Well, I hope I didn't change, Larry. I think in the near term, we've got a long problem here, maybe for the next year, year and a half, two years. But I'm of the view that Steve Forbes is correct, that we'll get a political backlash and a major change. And then, you know, you're really going to have a very strong market over the long haul. But Peter is correct on the spending. I mean, it's out of control, and that means higher taxes. And we're going to have a couple of years that are really pretty tough. But in the long run, Larry, I think these markets have gotten really low. And in 5, 10, 15 years, they'll be better than they are now. Well, and you have to bet on American democracy, Steve Forbes. That's I mean, exactly really, it. And I say this to Bo. I say this to all three of you. You have to bet on the good sense of this free country and its democracy. And look, in its wisdom, they elected Obama to fix the economic crisis. Crisis. They favored him over Mr. McCain and the Republicans. Okay, fine. But that's not forever. And if Obama moves too far to the left, Steve, then Americans will make a modification. It'll be like a mortgage. They'll modify. Yeah, the American, the American people want the economy fixed. They don't want a Chavez-like revolution or an Argentinian-like revolution uh, where the government takes over everything, government dominates everything. That's not what they voted for. They voted for a fix-it, not a revolution. And I think you're going to start to see that in, among people in these special elections. But the key thing short term, Larry, getting back to mark to mark, and I wish Mr. Buffett had been firmer on it, although he was nudging in the right he direction. He kind of opened the door. You he, know what he, he did? He sort door. of opened the door. <laughs> Holman Jenkins wrote a note about it in the Wall Street Journal diary. He sort of opened the door to it. By the way, Steve, there are hearings in the House on Thursday. There right. is a bill, yeah. and there are hearings. Well, that's a good sign, but uh, you know the president can do that, and Treasury could do that with the stroke of a pen. Yeah. And they do that, and people realize that the banking system is not going to be destroyed by regulatory write-offs and short sellers. Then we can start to get on the road to recovery. Yeah, the, 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 you, the main problem is, though, this economy, it, it can't be fixed in the way that we want to fix it. It's like, I remember you guys used to talk about Goldilocks. The reality is we did have a fairy tale economy, but it was Humpty Dumpty. And we, we can't fix it now. Uh, it, we can't put it back to the way it was because the way it was didn't work. We need to allow the markets to apply the only solution that will possibly work. We need to liquidate the bad debts. We need to go back to savings and production. We can't keep borrowing and spending. We can't do what... What Warren Buffett is advocating now, we need to do what he advocated back in 2004. But Peter, to... Peter what yeah. about the dollar? We talked about this earlier. The dollar is on a tear. We're not again today. Starting to yeah. sink gold prices. Now, you're, you don't like the dollar. You're betting against the dollar, are you not? Why well, do you I've been, think the I've dollar been betting is so against... strong? Yeah, well, I've been betting against it for a long time, and it dropped precipitously 
from about 2002 up until the middle of last year. Now, the dollar hit all-time record lows in the middle of last year. It was way oversold. It had a much bigger bounce than I would have thought. But the long-term trend is still intact. To say the dollar is strong, it's not as weak as it was last year. But I think it's going a lot lower ultimately. I think this is a phony bounce. I don't think it's going to last. I think it's so turning sentiment. you would sell sentiment. the dollar. You would Larry. short it, Peter. Absolutely. I Go mean, ahead, I've been Art. selling it. Go ahead, yeah, I, I didn't hear. I didn't hear Buffett say that about Mark to Market. To be honest with you, when I heard his comments, he still likes Mark to Market. He still likes Mark to Market. And and I was a little disappointed that he wasn't softer on that and really, for at least for capital requirements' sakes, not having a Mark to Market. You know, Art. One little thing here. Um, everybody beating up on Obama for the stock market plunge, and I think he deserves part of it, okay, and I've said this before, because he is raising tax rates on investors, yes. for example, and we learned in his budget that those tax hikes on investors, cap gains and dividends, will be uh, kicking in October 1st, 2009. Yep. We won't wait till 2011. So that was a big change. Now, Art, I did the math, correct me if I'm wrong. If you go from 15 to 20 percent on both dividends and cap gains, that means instead of taking home 85 cents on the dollar, you take home 80 cents on the dollar. That's a 6% reduction in your after-tax take-home for the extra dollar invested. If you take the two together, 6 on cap gains, 6% on dividends is 12%. Guess what? The market is down. The S&P 500 <laughs> is down 12% since the budget. Is such a thing possible? I mean, doesn't the stock market have to discount and include the, uh, in, in the effect of these policies? policies uh, in terms of future cash flows after tax? Of course. I love you dearly, though, for doing the math, Larry. Uh, I think it's sort of coincidence that it's that close. But, coincidence! But, I can't I believe know, you're I saying know. that! Coincidence! <laughs> but, Whoa! But, but I do love it. It's, yeah, it's obviously correct in the direction. It makes no sense what he's proposing doing. Why no one focuses on his cap and trade, which is $646 billion well, tax Steve increase. Forbes did. Steve Forbes yeah. did. Two-thirds of the personal income tax projected receipts he's proposing in cap and trade, which is going to be on the low incomes, middle incomes on all Americans on energy prices. That's a killer. Well, That's Steve a... Forbes, all right, let me go back to you, Steve. What, what, is there a, a silver bullet? Is there a magic bullet here for the banking crisis? It kind of comes down to that. I mean, we've all agreed there's really not much evidence, if any, of recovery in the economy or profits. There may be some, you know, better monetary policy. Peter doesn't agree, but more liquidity, low or energy prices and upward sloping yield curve. Steve Forrest, what would you like to see? Besides mark to market, what should the Treasury Department do? Uh, we may have a brand new Deputy Secretary, uh, Rajan Cohn, who's a really smart guy. What do you want him to do, Steve? Well, uh, I'll say mark to market. If you go mark to market and restore the uptick rule and stop naked short selling, that'll start to get the sector back on its feet. If you don't do those things, all these other things they're talking about are going to be ultimately for naught. But wouldn't it be better not to raise investment tax rates on the very <laughs> private funds we're asking oh, sure, to buy some of sure. the toxic assets? We, 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 we have to fight those things, and cap and trade, which is an energy tax, is going to be more than $600 billion. That's probably going to be over a trillion. That'll smash things. But if we get the banking but, system working again, yeah. well, we can win these other battles on taxes and spending. The American people are with us on those. Larry, oh. Peter, we, no, well, look, Peter, Larry. Peter Schiff, I want you to finish up here. Well, look, I, we don't need any more Wall Street heavyweights. These guys have done enough damage. You know, we need we Roger need. sounds a really smart guy, Peter. He's a really <laughs> they, smart guy. All these guys were smart, and look at the mess that we're in. Well, we right, need some no, new thinking. You know, we do you, need you sound money. Wrong. You can be wrong, but go ahead. Uh, look, Warren Buffett was early, okay? I don't think any of us really understood at the time or foresaw correctly Lehman and AIG, which created a terrible global credit crunch and really sunk the economy. I think it turned a mild recession into a very bad recession, Peter. I don't well, blame Warren Buffett That didn't that. create the crisis. The crisis crisis was coming anyway. Th those bankruptcies were symptoms of the crisis, and there should be a lot more of them. And the fact that the government is propping all these institutions up, it might be saving us some short-term pain, but they're infl inflicting much more long-term pain in the years ahead. All right, Pete, what's your one single issue that would turn you around from a bear to a bull? I know you're a long-run bull in America, and I like that very much. Just tell me from your standpoint, one single issue right in here that would get you uh, buying U.S. stocks. Well, it's going it's to be smaller government and sounder money, but it's not going to happen until uh, things get a lot worse first. A lot worse first. Art right, Laffer, are they going to get a lot worse first? I think so, Larry, but I'd like to see, if you saw the Democrats going against Obama's budget, I think that would be a real big thing.
All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Out of time. Great stuff. Thank you, gentlemen. Steve Forbes, Art Laffer, Peter Schiff, Warren Buffett. Thank you, sir. By the way, make sure to stay with CNBC into the 8 p.m. hour for The Billionaire Next Door, Restoring Trust. That's a full hour with Warren Buffett, including America's questions for the world's most famous investor tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern.